welcome back to my channel everyone I'm super excited about today's topic if the music in the background doesn't give it away maybe the fact that st. Patrick's Day was this past weekend or you saw a bunch of people walking around wearing green I'm gonna be talking about Ireland today um, just kind of some tricks and trades and uh, just certain things to keep an eye out for when you plan your next vacation there so if you're interested in hearing this list then just stick around number one Consider the time of year that you want to go. Just based on the type of weather that you prefer, keep in mind that most of the time it's going to be pretty chilly there. They do have, you know, short periods of time that it might be a little warmer, but generally speaking, it's pretty chilly and also very, very rainy. Um, the time that we went, we went last year, May 1st through May 9th, and we got extremely lucky. We didn't have rain the whole time that we were there. And we had prepared ourselves um, and our suitcases were very heavy, full, filled with waterproof shoes and boots, rain jackets, umbrellas. Um, but it's, you know, better to have and then not have and need it. So just consider the type of weather that you prefer and then kind of gear your trip towards that. But something to keep in mind is during those seasons that the weather is going to be more pleasant um, you're probably going to face a lot more tourists it's just going to be um, those peak times for tourist activity so if that's something that would make you want to change your mind about that time of year then um, just look into a, a different time of year where uh, the crowds won't be so many number two with the weather being said definitely knowing what type of attire to bring Again, depending on when you go, it's either going to be extremely rainy, rainy and chilly, or it might be a combination of all three, or you might not get rain at all. And um, that's just something that I feel like is embraced in Ireland. Um, and first, the mo one of the most important thing is to dress in layers. Um, that is one thing that we were very prepared for was to have lots of layers because in the morning it would be very very chilly while we were out and about getting breakfast then later in the day it would get really really warm and so you're just peeling layers off and um in the evening it you know the temperature drops again so just make sure that you're prepared with layers also if you're going to go during the rainy season or i i feel like just in general you should be prepared for this bring wool socks uh try to stay away from cotton just because cotton when it gets wet it doesn't breathe and dry as well as it should um and wool on the other hand that does and i don't know if it's ever happened to any of you it's definitely happened to me where my cotton socks have gotten wet before maybe like at a theme park and when you're constantly walking around it becomes extremely uncomfortable it can cause blisters it can cause that like wrinkly toe effect and for me it's very very painful because sometimes like the skin just it's very uncomfortable so i highly highly recommend um getting yourself a pack like a six pack of wool socks they're like super cheap on amazon that's actually where we found all of ours and a great pair of walking shoes I feel like that is just something that you need to know for Europe period because in Europe you're walking a lot and so just investing in a really good pair of comfortable shoes and break them in before you go um, like Jake he bought some uh, waterproof boots and he definitely made sure to use them around quite a bit beforehand and you know lucky that he did because those first I think it was like the first week of him using them they were causing him like blisters on the back of his ankles and everything, but I finally had, had broken them in. So just take that into consideration when, uh, you know, when deciding your wardrobe for the Number trip. three, let's talk about leading up to the time before you go to Ireland. You do want to make sure that you let your bank or your credit card either or know ahead of time that you, that you plan on traveling. Just because I know that there are a lot of banks or credit card companies out there that if they see suspicious activity that one day you're, you know, buying gas in Georgia and then the next thing you know you're buying a coffee in Ireland, they can put a block on that. And sometimes it's really difficult to get in contact with somebody to have them release the block or they might not even do it at all. They might send you a new card. So um, for me, like I have Bank of America and I think... Um, for a lot of people who have like USAA or any of those, 
there's a very easy function on their website if you just log in to uh, your own my banking and if you just do like you're traveling just put the dates and the countries that you're going to just so that they have a heads up and i feel like that that's something that people forget um and again you don't want to be stuck out there if that was like your only you know means of paying for anything uh also try and get euro ahead of time um before you get in country so if again this is something else that you would re request through your bank you can do it i think up to like maybe even two weeks early don't wait until the very last day because that is special currency that they're going to have to order so you could just you give them like a set amount and then they'll convert it for you and you can go into the bank and you pick it up um, just because the exchange rates usually at airports or even when you're in country the exchange rates get very very pricey um, and then a lot of ATMs there, they do allow for you to pull and they will convert it or you can pull it out like in cash or in euro. But sometimes, like I said, the exchange rate, it gets a little, it gets a little pricey. So uh, along the lines of letting your bank know, um, I think another important resource or the next step that you should contact is your cell phone provider. And of course, this is a personal preference. Um, but like last year I was technically still in the Air Force when I went on my trip and they need to have a valid like phone number for me essentially. So what I did was I have AT&T and you can just pay for a package where if you're you if you use your phone at all while you're abroad it'll just charge you like ten dollars that day you absolutely have the option of just leaving it shut off the whole time um, and just connecting to the Wi-Fi whenever you're there like in the hotel or a lot of restaurants and even some like bus stops and stuff they have uh, public Wi-Fi service so again that's totally a personal preference but um, for at least for AT&T once you turn on that option it pretty much stays there so anytime you go abroad you're still able to use your phone and it'll just add the ten dollars a day and then that'll be added to your next billing cycle number five so once you have established the time frame that you're going after that you probably want to decide where you're going to go and for that you're going to need transportation so depending on where you go a lot of the bigger cities, they do have train services available and different buses. But if you wanna to go to some of the more remote locations then you're gonna definitely need to look into renting a car. So number five is going to be all about renting a car. And all I can say is make sure, make sure that you get all of the insurance that they offer you. And pretty much if you don't, they, they, they kind of don't give you any other choice, but it's a good thing. I think that, uh, if I remember correctly, when you use a credit card, they put a $1,000 hold, but if you use a debit card, it's like a whole lot more than that. But So if you have uh, a good credit card, definitely use that. If your credit card company actually has an international car rental coverage policy, uh, try to use that because when you go to rent a car it might seem cheap just for those days but where it gets expensive is when they start adding the insurances but again you pretty much don't really have a choice you're gonna want that insurance um the roads are extremely narrow there they do have a lot of tourists and you know trying to get used to driving on the left hand side and people's cars get dinged up a lot. And apparently uh, some other crazy stuff has happened where I remember when they handed us the keys, they were like, yeah, so, you know, if you get into an accident or your car rolls over or you just can't find it, like you literally lost your car, just come back. If you have the keys, just give them back. If you don't, then you don't and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about it. And we, yeah, in a different country that, you know, anything could happen and we're not familiar with the roads, the landscape, we definitely opted for the insurance and I read so many different forums about it and I don't think I saw a single person say like, oh, don't even bother with the insurance. Everyone was talking about make sure that you get the insurance. So just 
definitely keep that in mind. Um, I think overall it still wasn't even that pricey and we had it for I think a good not eight days the car so and it was absolutely worth it because we were able to get to the more remote locations um, this little city called Athlone which I'll get into a little later um, driving out from Dublin all the way which is on the East Coast all the way out to the West Coast up to the most northern point and um, we got to do things at our own pace so that was really nice I definitely recommend um, uh, renting a car again just depends on what you're doing and where you're going but that's something that you should look into also one more thing to add about driving in Ireland be cognizant of the fact that you're going to be driving on the left hand side and most of the cars there unless you pay extra they're gonna be stick shift and the stick shift is also on the left um, for some reason it was very difficult for my brain to wrap around that and I primarily drive with my left hand so I would change gears and then I would put my hand on the steering wheel and I'd forget like, oh my God, I need to shift again. And it was just, it was very difficult for me. I drove from a good 30 minutes out of the whole trip. Uh, Jake drove most of the time and he did a great job. Um, it just, it was very, very stressful. During our drives, I'm, I like needed a Valium or something. I could never fall asleep because I was always just sitting there like, it feels weird. And you're so, the, like I said, the roads are so narrow. There's not really room for error. If you're gonna hit a curb, you're going to hit the curb. And uh, those areas where it's like more of the countryside, they're, it's kind of just lined with trees and, and shrubs. And if you hit one of those, like you're gonna do some damage. So again, that's why you gotta get the insurance. Um, but we were fine by the end, but we definitely had like a few scares and it's, Driving over there for me was very, very stressful, but um, that's what the bars are for. So number six, uh, here I'm just gonna kind of give some recommendations of things that we saw or did. So we flew into Dublin and that first night, super small world, but my brother Nabil happened to be in Ireland at the same time. And he was visiting a friend who was a local. So she took us to this small restaurant called the Harry Lemon. And that one was just a very like, you know, authentic Irish experience. The food was really good. Um, and we just really liked that place. They, the service there was awesome. They really took care of us and it's just a smaller place. The next night, um, I had booked our tickets ahead of time, so make sure that you do that. And it's pretty much like a dinner show. Um, you book your table slash your seats, and they play live Irish music, like folk music, and then there's live river dancing. If you look on my channel, I think I have another a video that has some of the show on there um, from Celtic Nights is what it's called. And that was so much fun. I think it lasted maybe... I want to say almost like two hours but you go and then uh, you choose you know your dinner plate and you get a little dessert and because it was Jake's birthday I let them know ahead of time they like you know made a shout out for his birthday and they brought him like a special cake and it was just a lot of fun uh, I really really like that it's again it's, I think it's more of a touristy type of thing but I really like dinner shows so it was fun it was worth it definitely after Dublin, we went to Athlone, that little town, and it has one of the oldest bars in Ireland from 900 AD, and it's called Sean's Bar. And Jake and I like to describe it as the old crusty pub experience. And it's just very old and very old, but it was really cool because you can, it just felt like there was so much history there. And um, it, was a, it was a fun little place and on the weekends they do um they have like a dj and sometimes they have live music and stuff and so one of the days that we were there we went um and it was a lot of fun we were able to go see the cliffs of moher because we stayed in athlone so i think it was only like um an hour and a half drive from there and the one suggestion i can make about going to the cliffs uh is definitely bring a jacket and a hat it gets very windy up there and i don't know about for you all but when I get really cold and if I have my hair up my ears hurt really bad right here and it was just but my hair was flying everywhere so I had to put my hair up and leaving me more exposed and so it was kind of I got a headache by the end of it 
definitely still worth it. Absolutely go. Um, and then they have a little restaurant there that, you know, it, afterwards we stopped in and, and we just had some food real quick before we went driving back. And on the way back, uh, we found this older, uh, really unique monastery uh, called the Clon Macnois. By the way, I'm going to put the names of these either down below or I'll put the link to the blog post that I already made about these specific places and how you can get to them. Um, and there were, it was a monastery, like, but ruins. So again, it was just more like very old feeling and just historic and we love that stuff. So <clears throat> after Athlone, we drove up to Belfast, which is technically in Northern Ireland and that's the United Kingdom. So don't be surprised that once you cross into that area that the street signs change. So in Ireland, it's all, it, or, Ireland versus Northern Ireland. In Ireland, it's all uh, kilometers per hour. And then once you get into Northern Ireland, then it changes, I think, back to like miles per hour. Or the, in that the signs look different as well. Also, there is the currency difference. Um, you're using Euro in Ireland, and then you're using the pound in Northern Ireland. But that's completely up to you if you wanted to venture out uh, into Northern Ireland. So we went up to Belfast, because in Belfast, that's where the Giant's Causeway is. And the Giant's Causeway is just this amazing, just natural beauty. And it's on the coast and it's these hexagonal shaped stones. I, I'll have to post pictures because there's no other way for me to really describe it. And they've been there for hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of years. And it's just one of those like natural wonders. Um, what I will say is, depending on the time of year you go, be aware of the tourists. It was very difficult for me to get a good picture without a bunch of people in the background. Um, and it was almost a little disappointing at certain times, you know, and even waiting in line to like take a picture, it just felt very theme park. And I was just kind of hoping, you know, like when you see the pictures of that type of stuff, you're expecting that you're gonna have like this spiritual experience because you're standing there by yourself looking at all this beauty. No, it's like Disney World or any other theme park because there are people crawling everywhere. So just be aware of that. Like I said, it's kind of the trade-off. Would you rather go in a time where it's gonna be more empty because the weather might not be as good or do you want, do you prefer better weather? But that's totally a personal preference. Um, also, when we drove back down to Dublin after that, we went to the Guinness factory, which was super cool because it's this huge tall building and I think if I remember correctly, it has seven floors and each floor kind of shows you a different step um, in them making the beer and at the very top you have a 360 degree view of Dublin, you're looking over it and you get with your ticket, including the tour, and you get a fresh pint of Guinness, and it was absolutely delicious. So I hope you all found this list helpful. By no means is it all inclusive of everything there is to know in Ireland because I haven't been everywhere in Ireland, but I think that this will definitely get you on the right track. If there's something that I'm, you know, maybe forgetting or, you know, something very important that I should, probably should have touched on, please just comment it down below, send me a message, I can update it. If you're interested in seeing more pictures from the trip, then I will post my blog link down below and you could just go to the album there and there are pictures and like I said, uh, I have interactive links to the different websites if you wanted to buy tickets or anything like that. And um, I hope to see you all in my next video. Slancha.